Gordon's whistle. Gordon was cross. Why should Henry have a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off to crew, leaving us to do his work. It's disgraceful. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It isn't wrong, said Gordon, but we just don't do it. Poor Henry didn't feel happy any more. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you are home again. I like your whistling. Goodbye, Henry, called Gordon next morning as he left the shed. We are glad to have you with us again, but be sure and remember what I said about whistling. Later on, Henry took a slow train and presently stopped at Edward's station. Hello, Henry, said Edward. You look splendid. I was pleased to hear your happy whistle yesterday. Thank you, Edward, smiled Henry. Shh, shh. Can you hear something? Edward listened. Far away, but getting louder and louder, was the sound of an engine's whistle. It sounds like Gordon, said Edward. And it ought to be Gordon, but Gordon never whistles like that. It was Gordon. He came rushing down the hill at a tremendous rate. He didn't look at Henry, and he didn't look at Edward. He was purple in the boiler and whistling fit to burst. He screamed through the station and disappeared. Well, said Edward, looking at Henry, it isn't wrong, chuckled Henry, but we just don't do it. And he told Edward what Gordon had said. Meanwhile, Gordon screeched along the line. People came out of their houses. Air raid sirens started. Five fire brigades got ready to go out. Horses upset their carts, and old ladies dropped their parcels. At a big station, the noise was awful. Porters and passengers held their ears. The fat controller held his ears, too. He gave a lot of orders, but no one could hear them. And Gordon went on whistling. At last, he clambered into Gordon's cab. Shake him away, he bellowed, and stop that noise. Still whistling, Gordon puffed sadly away. He whistled as he crossed the points. He whistled on the siding. He was still whistling as the last deafened passenger left the station. Then two fitters climbed up and knocked his whistle valve into place. And there was silence. Gordon slunk into the shed. He was glad it was empty. The others came in later. It isn't wrong, murmured Henry to no one in particular, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. We'll sing a song for Gordon. He's been